since we are seeing um, some level of progress in our electoral system, let's also now turn a new leaf and um, discard this issue of our party and begin to embrace the change that has been introduced. So before now, my dear, we hardly do what we call pre-registration or any form of um, INEC regi uh, you know, vo voter's registration online. Mm -hmm. But because of the agitations in the past, INEC has decided to you know, simplify this process, even to accommodate more young persons that are mobile because of the Android phone they have with them. So it is expected that at least we should also adapt to this change that is in our favor. Okay. Some of you, some of our youths are still not opting for that option of registering online or, you know, doing some of these, their transfers online before they even proceed to INEC office. So please, let us trust the system. Let us bridge the gap. Let us begin to play our own part as citizens. Then we can have every local standing or moral right to speak against the system whenever the system is seen to have um, shortcomings. Okay, I'm t talking about, you know, um, the system, especially INEC as the umpire here now. Um, from what we saw, I mean, we need to just um, address it a bit because it's an indicator for what to come in the general elections, which is just eight months away. From what we've seen in Ikiti, do you think, um, based on the electoral process, I know you talked about the low turnout of voters, but do you think INEC is ready to conduct the general elections wherein the people will have trust in the process once again? INEC, to me, has shown signs and indications that they are ready to conduct credible election. As citizens on our own part, let us support this umpire. Let us support them with whatever we have. Let us show to them that we also are ready to partner with them. And um, to be fair, a lot of um, NGOs, a lot of, um, you know, um right activists are also you know partnering with um, INEC to see that they also conduct credible elections you see INEC is not um an alien in the country they are part of us the people who work with INEC they are Nigerians and um if they give us an election that is not credible mm -hmm. it will also affect them at the end of the day so they have seen it from that angle and I'm pretty sure they are also ready to deliver to Nigeria so that we can continue to sustain this democracy very good note. Now, aside INEC, now still using Ekiti State as an, as an example, we saw mm -hmm. a lot of happenings that are not supposed to happen in Ekiti State. We also saw the fact that we had policemen sitting all over, and then there were, there were also reports that some EFCC staff, of course, would be on the election ground and then every evil that happened there still happened irrespective of the security agents that were all around so would you say now you're talking about i like being ready would you say the people or the agents are actually really ready for a free fair and credible election come 2023 i must say that the presence of efcc at the elections in ekiti shows that um, they are ready to walk the talk and so it will send a strong signal to uh voters to politicians and all other players in the election matters even in ocean state of course the next election will be holding in ocean state by july that um, government agencies paramilitary agencies are ready to combat any form of electoral malpractice but, and which but of course in the kitty was it combated it wasn't compacted in the kitty because with the presence there, we still had the rate of buy and selling of votes going can on. You, can, you, can you combat easily a full bloom war in a day? No, it's a gradual thing, it's a gradual process. That is what I believe. It's just one but state out of the many states we have, and of course, more states will conduct the elections and then would have the presidential elections. So, if one state see, with all the presence of policemen and all of that could not do that, at least it was prevalent, it was. Almost in every ward in Akita State, it was the, the no, ones that had more vote buying was it, more than those that it, did not have vote buying. I, I didn't get that. that. The fact that EFCC men were there to even nab some of the perpetrators of this buying and selling of votes shows that government is ready to address it. Okay. And it will also send the signal to 
you know, other states or, you know, uh, other uh, 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 players in the, uh, uh, in the elections that this time around, buying and selling of votes will not be condoned by government and its agencies. And so if there is even, so it's, it's a greater thing, if there's going to be any of such in uh, subsequent elections, say for example, Washington State, I'm pretty sure they would be more discreet about it because uh, the fear of EFCC will of course be uh, the beginning of uh, wisdom I, uh, as I might probably adapt from uh, you know, the Bible. So please, let's just continue to also <clears throat> add our own voice to see to it that um, Nigerians, because all these people that are practicing, that are doing this, they are Nigerians. They are our friends, they are our brothers, they are our neighbors. Let's sensitize them. Let's tell them that the best way to convince a voter is to give them quality and sound governance. Let people see good governance and um, they will swing to your side, not necessarily by luring them uh, or enticing them with um, chicken change that will not last them for more than a day. Okay, talking about, you know, um, vote buying and all of that, um, go, you know, going forward, I, I know quite well that INEC is putting all the measures in place, um, but let, let's, you know, zone it back to the issue of um, extending voters' registration, among others. What other policies do you think or measures should INEC take to ensure that, you know, the apathy we are all clamoring for to go away and people should get involved, that that would be, you know, the um, order of the day in terms of people not just registering to get their PVCs or getting it, but more importantly, turning up on that day? I think INA should increase the advocacy programs okay. and um, sensitization drive as well. You see, people need to be aware. And uh, one of the, the best way to, to go about it is not by using um, government-owned TV stations. Mm -hmm. I doubt uh, if young persons or the people that they are expecting to come out and vote during elections watch, watch um, the, those stations. Watch NTAs and all that. So uh, I think they should now begin to see how they can, uh, you know, use some of our influencers. When I say social media influencers, mm -hmm. whom, of course, have um, gained the attention of so many youths to pass the message to the youth that um, INEC is working every day to strengthen our democracy and um, people should renew their trust in the system. So more of advocacy more of sensitization, using medium that can appeal to the an average Nigerian voter, of course, uh, the our youth nowadays. So I think that um, INEC should concentrate more on advocacy and sensitization. Okay, um, just, you know, before we wrap up this conversation, we, we need to also address um, something that um, we saw over the last time, um, six weeks thereabout. Um, it's still not necessarily vote buying, but it's how monetized, you know, the process is. From the PDP presidential primaries to that of the APC and um, now to the to governorship election, we know how monetized or highly monetized, you know, the process is. And that those who are clamoring that, you know, um, because of high, how um, highly monetized it is, um, the youths have been shut out. I mean, the 100 million now presidential forms, how many youths can afford it, among others. So for all of these concerns, I, I would like to hear your view on how we can address the issue of monetization within the um, process itself or the system you know the painful part mm -hmm. is that some of our very good guys that had uh, in the past spoken against monetization yes. of um, you know elections and all that are now the ones who are guilty of it the after most getting this to power yes it's quite unfortunate it's it that uh, when they eventually, you know, get to office. Um, the network they're messing up. Uh, it, it was beginning to, you know, address those issues. I know you talked about those who probably stood against it, mm -hmm. and then when they got into power, they now decided to, you know, also, in quote, um, join the gang of um, those who, um, you know, influence the political system with, um, you know, money. Again, we, we talked about, you know, um, politicians wielding um, poverty as a tool to, you know, um, keep power to themselves and influence the political system. I think it's quite unfortunate. Um, if we keep going this way in terms of, you know, primaries being highly monetized, governor, um, elections now, mm -hmm. be it governorship or local government or whatever, you know, states um, or presidential elections being highly monetized, you have um, the average guys who um, probably do not have the financial backing you know, being shut out, especially the youths. And, you know, for all of the clamor of, oh, we need a change of guard from 
the old guards to the new ones, the youths, you know, taking charge. I think um, the process, because it's highly monetized, that would also discourage some youths from participating in it. Well, we saw what happened already. Yeah. Okay, I think it's on. Please oh, go okay. on. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you. It is so so <laughs> so pathetic to to even note that um, the youth that you are uh, you know advancing their cause now yes. that you are saying they should be allowed to you know participate in a in a private in a demonetized election. Mm -hmm. Some of them are even the ones encouraging monetization of elections and politics as it is. So it's quite unfortunate. I I can't place it. That um, when you know youths that are expected to you know uh, champion the cause of oh don't let us uh, monetize elections they are even the ones demanding demanding money from uh, politicians. politicians. Yeah, you understand. So it's 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 I, I don't know. I think I, I can't just place that kind of oxymoron uh, anyway. You know <laughs> when you are expected to do the right thing or to champion the right thing, but you are the one. Uh, you know, uh, found uh, engrossed in, in that um, illegal activity or, you know, uncalled for activity. So please, I think we need to begin to speak to our youths too okay. um, and advocate for change and um, lead by example. Lead by, by example. example. You know, it's very, very important. And for those that are fortunate to be in the corridors of power today, mm -hmm. Can you consciously begin to raise like minds among um, the youth that are out there? Show exemplary leadership. Show to them that you are a break from the norm, and see how you can also continue to recruit more like minds into your fold and mm -hmm. raise them. Let's begin to raise the new generation of leaders that will mm -hmm. change the face of governance in mm -hmm. this country. Okay. Well, Do not join the bandwagon for Christ's sake. Let's stand out. Well, and at okay. the end of the day. We will have ourselves to thank for taking the right step at the right time. Okay. Um. Just before we let you go, um. Do you advocate that there should be a cap to um nomination forms or you know um the process? Again, I'm saying this because um from the look of things, from 2011 downwards, um the prices of nomination forms and all for some parties have skyrocketed, and it looks like there's no going back. You know, on these um costs. So, will you advocate that there should be a cap to um, nomination forms for each positions and all of that. That way, you know, um, the, the system is kind of regulated, especially against them, um, you know, um, the system being highly monetized. Re of course, I agree with you that um, they should regulate it. Uh, there should be a mm -hmm. cap for um, nomination form fees. And, um, you know, beyond that, political parties should place a um, premium on... The, the capacity of those that are coming out to contest, mm -hmm. they should not place priority on who can fund elections. elections. You understand? Because that is the issue now. If No matter how good you are, have the character, have the capacity, have the needed um, you know, competence to run for election, they will ask you, do you have the financial washers to, to run this election? And if your answer is no, they will not consider you. They would rather get a money back to replace you, or you know, or they would rather support a money back ahead of you. So I think political parties should go back to drawing board. How we used to run political parties in the past is that um, political parties fund um, the candidacy of mm -hmm. their, 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 their candidates. They fund the election of their candidates. You know, they contribute money and they fund you. But in this case now, you are the one that is funding. If you are running for election, you'll be the mm -hmm. one to fund the fund, party. Yes. Right. It's, quite, it's quite unfortunate. This is where we find ourselves today. So if you can retrace the step, or okay. better still. All right. Uh, well, I think there's a, a bit of a network issue. Well, yes. he has spoken at length. And at length really. I think that's a good place to, to wrap, wrap up, up this yeah. conversation right now. Well, Ashwa Juri, if you can hear, thank you so much. Yeah. We appreciate your time on the show this morning. Thank you. And well, Samson, he... All right, thank you so much, too. And some of the thoughts he shared, the fact that those who were advocating for um, change in leadership mm -hmm. can have, have the old people rulers anymore and spoil the things yes. we've worked for at the, the Sorosuke generations, like <laughs> they would say. And now the ones campaigning and advocating for this, you know, they're coming out. It's not bad to have to advocate for anybody, but then these are the same people who you or we claim to have spoiled the system. And then also the issues of form. I was going to take that up with him before you brought it up. Imagine a young person of 26, 28, 30, 35, 
having to afford a hundred million naira uh, when forty million when when he's not uh, well mm -hmm. he's not a criminal and then mm -hmm. he he doesn't at, at thirty five am I expected to have a hundred million naira somewhere for elections and not having to use it to well, at least do something you, else that's even just for nomination forms you know you still have to um spend money on your campaign of course printing of posters billboards and all of the you know all of the forms of it ads and to all. young ones I want it's to come quite up discouraging back. it's quite discouraging really well, we've had it all from Ashiwaju and also yeah. every conversation we have here on the show both towards elections and governance generally, the change you want would actually really, really start with you. You sell your vote, you sell your future, you sell your vote, you sell your life, and you don't have a right to complain of bad leadership if you sell your vote. So to end all of those things, be sure, be, do well to be a good Nigerian, exercise your franchise, get your voters card, and also vote when necessary. Protect your vote because your vote does count. We'll take a short break now. More interesting segments coming up after the break. Stay with us.